if you are ready to stop feeling frustrated and overwhelmed by your child's behavior and you think a new curriculum might solve your problems, then I want to invite you to check out my free masterclass called the Intro to Loving Your Homeschool Life. You can find the link for that below this video. And while you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so that you get notified every single week when I release new content geared specifically to your Catholic homeschool life. My name is Emily Brown, and I'm a certified Catholic life coach for Catholic homeschool moms who want to fall more deeply in love with their life and this call from God to homeschool, have deep connection with the Lord, with this vocation, and with each of their children on this journey that God is calling them to on their path to sainthood. But if you're expecting your child's behavior and desire to do their schoolwork to provide you the calmness and confidence and accomplished feelings that you desire to have in your homeschool day, then I want to encourage you to stick around because this episode is for you. All right, it's a typical Wednesday morning and you know something isn't right. Your son is trying to get out of his math assignment again He's trying to skip through problems. He is avoiding the schoolwork at all costs, and his spine has suddenly turned into jello, and he's laying around all over the place. You immediately think, oh, I just need a new math curriculum that will hold his attention. He's too distracted. So then you spend hours on Facebook chat boards asking for all the help, and then you receive hundreds upon hundreds of well-meaning suggestions, and you quickly become overwhelmed because you don't know where to start. But the longer this takes, the longer you stay in this misery of trying to get your kid to do his math work when he really doesn't want to. You have so many judgmental thoughts about him, like he's lazy, or he doesn't care enough, or he doesn't work hard enough. You just want to move on, but his distractedness is keeping you in this limbo of constantly wondering if he's going to pass the fourth grade before he moves out of your house. You get the new curriculum in and then you wander around as he's doing the work nonchalantly looking over his shoulder asking him gently and then not so gently over time if he needs to get back to work hey stay focused hey pay attention and so on and so on you decide to take a break so you go make lunch and when you come back you notice that he's barely moved beyond where he was 30 minutes ago a big sigh escapes you and you make sure he knows exactly how disappointed you are even though you're pretty sure it won't make a lick of difference you start thinking about making even bigger changes beyond the curriculum taking privileges away adding more consequences or even wondering if maybe he'd be better off at school here's the thing you want to make a big change because you want to avoid this uncomfortable feeling of being disconnected with your child and watching him not do what you asked him to do. His behavior and all the judgments that you're having about his behavior are what's causing you to feel disconnected. And those are the judgments and those feelings that are keeping you disconnected from yourself and really being able to be his mother, which is what he needs more than anything else. When you're feeling this level of disconnection, it's because your emotions are all tied up in your child's behavior. And what I mean by that is that your emotional regulation is all tied up in whether or not your child behaves a specific way. And unfortunately, this does not create a safe space for him to learn at his own pace or struggle with something without worrying about disappointing you or hurting your feelings. He can't trust your reaction to have his back and support him when he needs you to. He believes he can't handle the workload or even himself because of how often he's heard from you that he just can't do it. All right, time out, pause, take a deep breath, mama. I know that this sounds like a really big indictment and you might be feeling really called out right now if this has been your reality lately. I wanna let you know that it's okay. Most of us have gone through something like this with at least one of our children, if not all of our children, at some point in our homeschooling career. The best news is that there is a simple way to know if you should make a big change or if you need to just focus on putting the relationship first and getting to the root of the problem. And here's the key. The root of all of this struggle, all of these problems, are your thoughts, your judgments about this child and your feelings of disconnection and irritation, frustration, anger, all of those unwanted emotions that you are not willing to deal with. And so you are looking for some other exterior solution for these interior problems. But my friend, it's just not going to be there. Nothing outside of you is going to fix this problem inside because all of those emotions are coming from your thoughts, not from your kid. So when you're trying to decide if you need to make a big change, then I have a few steps for you to take. The first is for you to step back and evaluate your motives for wanting to make the change. Are you wanting to make this change out of fear or frustration or anger? Or are you having this um, desire to make a change out of a calm certainty that this is going to be what's right for your child? If your motivation is coming from worry that is stemming from some version of the thought that he's not going to succeed in life if he doesn't buckle down and get going on this work, then that is thought is what's driving all of that worry, that fear, that frustration, and all of that leads to anger and disconnection. But really, there's actually an underlying thought and concern that 
his performance in life is going to be a reflection, a poor reflection on you. Again, you're expecting your son's behavior to provide you with the feeling that you want to have in your homeschool day, like accomplished or satisfied or proud. But again, it can't because your son cannot provide you emotions, positive or negative. All of those have to come from within you and they start in your brain. So my suggestion is to plan a day, not today, not when you're emotionally worked up, but when you can be calm, when you can set time aside and actually plan on evaluating how your son is doing with this math curriculum. When you sit down to do that evaluation, then clean up your thoughts first. Set aside all of the negative judgments and concerns and worries and only focus on this child and this math curriculum and where he is at in this moment. Second, reestablish connection and trust with this child, or at least start taking the first steps. Apologize for anything that you owe an apology for and really look him in the eyes. Get to the root of the problem by listening to what his side of everything is. You may be missing an underlying problem that's going on with your son that you just cannot see when you're so emotionally charged about the situation. So stepping back, calming down, cleaning up your thoughts, and then getting curious about what's going on with your son can actually lead to more solutions than anything you could do on a Facebook chat board. Creating a safe space for him to give you honest feedback is going to be the key for really getting to the root of what's going on. And that is going to really give you the answers you're seeking for whether or not you need to make a big change. Once you have all the information and you've collected all the data from you and your child, then you can go to work to decide if it's time to make a big change or not. But check in with your thoughts and feelings. If you are wanting to make this change still out of fear or frustration or anger, then I want you to pause and really focus on the relationship with yourself and with your son. However, if you have a calm certainty, this calmness in your body that is certain that this is right, that this is right for your child, then go ahead and make that change. That's when you can step into that calm knowing that the Holy Spirit gives you as this child's mother to do what is best for him. So again, pause, clean up your thoughts, reconnect with your child, and look for calm and certainty instead of frustration and anger. And my friend, when you can step back and you can get really clear about what the actual problem is, then you can start finding actual solutions inspired by the Holy Spirit. And when you can do this every single day, then that's how you become the happy, holy mama you desire to be. If this video served you, then I want to invite you to come join me in the Happy Holy Mama membership. This is my year-long life coaching membership for Catholic homeschool moms who want to fall more deeply in love with their life and this call from God to homeschool their children. This is a program that is going to give you support through all the seasons of life and homeschooling, teaching you mind management, emotional regulation, time management, Catholic homeschool strategy, and so much more, including support through weekly group coaching calls for an entire year. You can find all the details for the program at fiatlifecoaching.com forward slash membership, or you can go to the link below this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week. God bless.